How's it going guys? Stay with 1993 here. Or of course if you know me from YouTube it's Stay with 1993 vlogs. Now welcome back. I know I've been gone for a couple of days but oh, I had to take a little break. I wasn't feeling too good in the old noggin. Um, but I'm okay now. I'm going to top into general chat here with Lord Arbor. How's it going? You alright? Yeah. How's it been? Did you have a good time while you were away? Are you still there? Oh, of course, of course. You just you just playing a bit of Mech Warrior then. Yeah, we ran the ah, fair enough. I just I I just had I just took a little break because I've not been feeling my best. So yeah. you know, there's going to be times where you feel like that. It's uh, it's what having a condition does to you, I guess. No, I didn't. Uh, what? Oh, I saw the SpongeBob. I saw that SpongeBob anime opening thing. Yeah. They've just made. They've just made a full-on SpongeBob anime episode now. Well, now I've seen everything. <laughs> it's like, it's a spun... This is what... <sighs> I'm going to have to watch it, but I'm going to feel like... Yeah. I'm going to feel like I'm on drugs watching it the whole time. It's turning Spongebob into an anime, that's brilliant. <laughs> but I, I, who looked at Spongebob and said, do you know what this needs? An anime adaption. It's like, then just, you just watch the, you just, so does it follow a different story from Spongebob then, or? So I know Bubble Bass was in the, it was in Spongebob, but it was, it was kind of, it was that guy who kept harassing Spongebob. Um, oh my. Oh. Oh my god. The fact that they got voice actors that to like, do anime Spongebob, I, I, it bothers me on, on, on a fundamental level, like, it, I'm glad it exists, but also why? Why? So, Halo Infinite. Yeah. How do we feel? I'm excited for it. Me too. Um, people were complaining about the way the game looked. For a start, um, that build was from January. There's, there's quite a few, but then, but some of those I'm like, well, that's stupid. It's like, um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the grappling hook. Yeah. Well, not necessarily. I mean, Apex Legends has a grappling hook. Um, Here's the thing as well, people are like, oh, it's armor mods, blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, but it's, it's, it's a pickup in multiplayer, like a bubble shield. Um, in... Contra. Contra in the 1980s had a grappling hook. Ratchet and Clank in 2001 had a grappling hook. Like if we're gonna go really far back, you could say that Disney's Tarzan, the PS1 game, swung across vines, therefore a grappling hook. Uh, every. That's true. Literally every Batman game has had a grappling hook. Yeah. <laughs> 
um, James Bond games, uh, Agent Under Fire on the original Xbox had a grappling hook. Uh, is Halo copying James Bond Agent Under Fire from the year 2002 now? Well, well, well. That's object. That's that's just objectively incorrect. Um, and then um, on top of that, people complained about the graphics, and it's like, yes, we know the graphics weren't the best in that trailer, but that is an earlier build. It was on the Xbox. Yeah, it was. Yeah, um, there was that. So it wasn't in true 4K. Um, Yeah, and I'm. You see, I'm not saying this just because I'm a Halo fan. I'm saying that the, the, the criticisms don't make sense. Um, and the reason for that is not. Uh, it's because a that was an unfinished game. The game doesn't come out for at least another like what four months. Yeah, so about, basically around November, um, and and the thing is. Um, that means they've got months and months to to up the graphical fidelity on certain things, like texture things. Um, on top of that, as well, the after the gameplay trailer, they released another smaller trailer, and the gra uh, and the graphics were already better in that because that was on a newer build. Yeah, and all the graphics, everything looked better in that. And that's because that was a slightly newer build. And they said that all the versions that they showed were from older builds, um, which means that what they currently what they currently have is better than those. And and the reason that um, things didn't look as good is because that build from January they've got the uh, models in, but a lot of some of the things will need a higher fidelity texture. Uh, some of them probably aren't fully textured items yet. Um, Yeah. So does does what the maybe one person just type in his um chat in his uh stream in his uh Twitch chat mm -hmm. just saying this does not this this does not look like Halo, just saying that every now and again. But it does look like Halo. It looks like classic it's the classic art style. There's that, but also what what bothers me is that the graphics in the in the shorter trailer looked so much better, and people are ignoring the fact that shorter trailer even exists. It's like yeah, but but you know. In... Well, no, of course not. But what bothers me is that we. We've also got proof that the graphics have been altered and improved since then. Yep. It's like, you can literally see that. Like, there is literal proof of that. It's like, like it doesn't take a genius to work out that there is improvements that already been made to the game. Um, and it's, it, it, it's frustrating because you can't tell people anything without them going, yeah, but you saw the gameplay. I'm like... What you saw was technically pre-alpha gameplay. So they've probably finished the base game, but without the textures and shit. And now, the, the, basically, any game development cycle, and I'm not a game developer, I just know this from being a, f a fan of gaming for a very long time, is that is that the first, what, solid 80% of development is usually... Um, focused on um, developing the game, so the core game mechanics, gameplay, flow, um, and then um, like stuff like story and that is done. And then the rest of it is, is the last couple of months are spent in polish, which is just making things look pretty. Yeah. Which means the game probably doesn't look pretty right now because that build that they had, that first build where they showed the eight minutes of gameplay, was functionally designed to show how the game will play and not to show how it's going to finally look. You, and you can tell this because, like, 343 would not export a game for launch where something, the Elite, didn't even have a fucking shadow. Yeah. And trees were rendering in at random. They wouldn't launch that. 
No game developer would launch that. Yeah, those will all be already rendered, but those were just there as texture, and they were and and what it is is that they weren't they, the rendering times were off because the um it was because of the way it was exported and with it being such an early build, the aspect ratio was probably off because uh, a lot of games only render what you can physically see and not what's around you. Um, so like the way so the reason that some games like Destiny have such high fidelity is that um, it only renders what your character can see. Now, if that's if that's a pre-alpha build, the aspect ratio is probably not set correctly yet, which means that it, the game doesn't know what to render and what not to render. Yeah. Like I'm only I'm not making excuses. I'm just looking at this from a point of view of there's plenty of reasons that game didn't look finished, and that's because it wasn't finished. Yeah. <laughs> it's as simple as that. The game wasn't finished, and it's still not finished. The next couple of months, they're going to spend probably refining it, making it look nice, and finish and picking up any little glitches or dealing with anything that the because um, they've had test flights, they have been testing the game, but they've been testing these earlier builds for gameplay with like friends and family and stuff. And that way, they don't have to launch anything to the public that they're not happy with. And the people like the insiders who've been under non-disclosure uh, have seen the game the game working and so any criticisms they have aren't public criticism um, and that's good because that gives them the chance to rectify anything before it gets in the hands of the player and it's like people just need to realize that there is literally I have zero concerns that 343 will ship an unfinished game because I don't think they will like they've got until the Xbox launch they know, they, they know how long they've got they've got time They've got plenty of time now. Now that they know that the gameplay all works, because we've seen it working, and to me the gameplay looks really good. Um, I think they've got the right blend of classic Halo, but they've got enough of the modern Halo mechanics in there. Yeah. Some people complain, well, why is sprinting the game? I'm like, okay, so you're telling me a seven-foot super soldier can't run fast? Like, that's just stupid. Sprint has to be in there. It's like, it just makes sense. And literally, you name me one shooter that has been made recently where your character can't run fast. There isn't one. The simple fact is, yeah, oh, it's not classic gameplay. It's like, yeah, but it's not going to be classic gameplay on the next gen, is it? It, it, it can still feel like Halo, but have these things in there. It's just if it's done right. So, for instance, what they've done right is they've not taken out Clamber, which I'm glad about. Because, like, if you are, if you jump up onto a ledge, it doesn't make sense that you have to be feet above the ledge. Why couldn't a super soldier grab the ledge and pull himself up? Like, why couldn't a super soldier run at speed? Why couldn't a super soldier sprint and then slide? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, those things were, for me... In Halo 5, those were some of the really good things I liked about it. The advanced movement was something I enjoyed. Yeah. I thought, God, this feels so much better. Like, I love Halo 3, don't get me wrong, I'm playing it now, but if this game had advanced movement, I think it would have flowed better, some of the gameplay. Yeah. I mean, don't, don't get me wrong, don't touch Halo 3, it's a classic. But, um, if this game had had advanced movement in there, some I, I feel to some degree... Um, it might have felt better in some multiplayer situations. Like if I could, instead of missing a ledge because I jump into it and hit it with my my Spartan just jumps into it and whacks against it with his helmet and bounces off, if he'd be able to grab that ledge and pull himself up. Like to me, that would have made so much more sense. Like I'm a super soldier, why can't I do that? Do you know what I mean? Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm liking the... Um, the, 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 the banished sort of general that we're going to be fighting against, I think he's a really good character. Yeah. Already, I think he's cool. Like, I, I already want to kill him. <laughs> Mainly because I feel like I've been issued a challenge. But that's what I like about him as well. It's not like he's on a holy war. He literally just wants to fight the Master Chief for his one last hurrah. Like, he just wants to have the honour of fighting the Chief. Like, his whole thing is he wants to fight a Spartan and he wants to win, you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, not just any Spartan, the, you know, the, you know, the one who's saved the universe a million times. 
you know, um, it's like, and I, th I think it's going to be amazing. I actually have, I've seen the gameplay, I've watched it, I've seen everything that everyone else saw, and I think it's going to be amazing myself. Um, Fable's coming back. I'm glad about Fable coming back. Um, what else? What was that other one that I thought looked interesting? The, the new State of Decay game looked quite good. Um, I was mainly there for Halo, to be honest. <laughs> but, you know, Halo's... It's like... I'm going to put Reach on the playlist as well. Why not? I know, I know it's a Halo 3 stream, but if I just put Reach on the playlist just for... Might as well mix it up a little bit. Not that there's anything wrong with Halo 3, I just think if we put Reach and 3 in there, it's cool. Um, personally, though, I honestly think that the criticisms that Halo had in there were somewhat unfounded. And that's not just me being a shill for Halo. Don't get me wrong, I love Halo, but... I just... The haters, the one like the Call of Duty fans, the ones who either that or um, I, th I think you've got the um, the alternatives of um, I think more than anything it was a mixture of people who expected a completely finished game, which is silly. Um, people who wanted a completely finished game and people who wanted you got the combination of people who wanted the finished game to be like, oh, why isn't this game like 100% finished? And people who and people who wanted the game to be bad. Do you know what I mean? That's the problem you've got. There's people who wanted it to fail, and they're like, oh, see, you know? And it's really crap, but that's literally how some people's mentality is. Like, there's people who want to see people fail. Like for me, it's like I was much, ha I was just happy to see it more than anything else. And I think the game visually, yeah, it needs some polish, but visually it looked really nice. Like it gave me those classic Halo vibes, but it didn't feel cartoony. It didn't feel too. Whose reaction? I haven't seen his reaction. Did he say he didn't like it? Well, again, I think visually the game doesn't look great right now, but we, I, did, I wasn't expecting it to look good. I, I. Well, that's, yeah, I mean, that's the thing, like, it's like, my, that's my problem with it, like, um, I think that, if I'm honest, there's a, it's a fair response to, to say, oh, the game doesn't look great, because, objectively, the game didn't look fantastic at that point. But the thing is, the game didn't look bad, it just didn't look as good as it's going to. Yeah. It's like, for me, it's not that the game was bad, it's just that it wasn't, like, how, how people expected it to look. And that's fine, because it's not ready yet. They've got, they've got, it's like, the, um, it's like the first time we saw, um, think about it this way, the first time that we saw, uh, what's it called now? Um, um, the Halo 5 multiplayer, right, on the beta. The graphics on that weren't great. But then, what they did was, by the time the game was released, they'd upgraded the visual fidelity, everything looked cleaner, everything looked more textured, better contrast, better colour balance, you know. Because that's what development does, you know? That's what game development is. It's a rolling progress, and literally, until the day before that game ships, they can change whatever they want. Yeah. And they will change. 
and, it, and things will look nicer. Um, and it's like things are going to look good. And the game's going to, it's going to be fine. Do you know what I mean? Um, and I'm, either way, even if that's how the finished game looks, I'm still going to play it. Because it's Halo. And the multiplayer, no doubt, they haven't shown us yet, but the multiplayer, I bet it's going to be great. Like, the new technology that's just innately built into the Slipspace engine, I think it's going to give us a fantastic multiplayer experience. And I think that the maps, I think we're going to see... Is there any maps you want to see come back? I've got a list, but... Well, they'll definitely be there. Um, but... Yeah, it's like, I think we're going to get some of those classic feely maps. We're not going to get... For example, it's not going to be Blood Gulch, but it's going to feel like Blood Gulch kind of thing, you know? Maybe Blood Gulch will be in there. For me, we should put Val... I want Valhalla in there. But that's because it's my favourite Halo map of all time. Valhalla. I mean, it, I, personally, I think they've had time. Um, if they, I mean, if, if, if they've had time to include that if they want to. Um, on top of that, I'd like to see, um, personally... Alternatively, they could just swap out some of the, uh, like, change the ghost for, like, the, a banished equivalent. Um... I mean, they might just put it in there as it is, and just swap some of the weapons out for banished weapons. Um, I think that could be okay. Um, I also think um, I'd like to see the map from Halo... We're going to talk in Halo 3 here for a moment, but uh, Citadel. I'd like to see Citadel come back. Construct. Construct, sorry, not Citadel. I'd li I like... Construct, it's the one across three levels with the grav lifts. Um, the construct, constructs the one, it's across three levels, it's got the two purple grav lifts and the one gold one. Um, and it's... Construct. It's one of my favourite Halo 3 maps anyway. Um, I think... I also would like to see, from Halo 2, Ivory Tower. Um, and possibly Lockout. Um, in terms of Halo 1, um, Battle Creek... Uh, Sidewinder. But that's basically Avalanche, but Sidewinder. Um, I'd like... Let's see what else we're like from that. I also would like... Is it Bo Boneyard from Halo 2, I think it is, or Halo 1? Boneyard? I want that one back. And I also liked... Um, what was the one called? It was in the Halo 2 Anniversary, and it, got, it was a big deal because they, they, they brought it back and uh, made it really pretty. It was the... Um, is it Ascension? The what? No, Zanzibar needs to come back, but that's a different one. Um, it was it was the it was the uh, it was the Forerunner one that was uh, remade in Forge World for Halo Reach, and then uh, they brought it in Halo Two Anniversary. It was there as well. It's like it's like I can't remember what they call it, um, but that one. Um, also, there's a map I really like from Halo Three that most people I'd like to see the pit as well. Yeah. 
there's one that there's one there's one map that's a point of contention that I know people probably don't want to see come back, but it's one that I want to see come back because I like it. Uh, Epitaph from Halo Three. It's the one that's like in that forerunner cathedrally looking place. With all the hard light walls. It's got the floating pad in the middle with a rocket launcher. And you can go around the outside and stuff and it's like in a big tower in a desert. Yeah. You know what would be a cool map to bring back? Sand Trap. Yeah, that's a big vehicle. Or something like Sand Trap. Maybe like a new version. Yeah, like on the on you know, I mean some kind of Sand Trap style. You know, some big open vehicle vehicle map. I want a Valhalla style map. I want I want a good mixture. I want to feel like there are claustrophobic maps where it's on tight corners. It's like they never I don't think they would bring it back, but like the map standoff. I love the map standoff which I'm just about to play now. Um I love I love that map. I think standoff's a fantastic map. Um I don't and it's like I think standoff would be a good addition. But I don't think it'll make get a remake because it's not popular enough. No. But for me, it was one of the best maps in Halo 3's DLC. Yeah. And the reason I say that is just because it was just so well structured. You could do vehicular combat on there really well as well. But hell, you could even put a Banshee on this map and it'd have been fine. Do you know what I mean? Um, let's see what other maps would be really interesting to see come back. Um, is there any maps you want to see come back? Without looking at the list, without looking at the list of all the, of all the maps about the, about the games, uh, I know the two I don't want back. I'm guessing Snowbound. Then why, then why that map's not coming back? I'll tell you what map could come back. I'd welcome back Narrows. You don't like na you don't like narrows. Uh, there's a lot of maps I don't like. See, there was there was only a couple of maps I didn't like playing, and that was um, I didn't like um, what's it called? Oh no, I like I liked I liked Ghost Town. Um, I liked. It's not bad for Slayer. Team Slayer. Um, I'm not bothered if they bring back Foundry. I don't really care for Foundry. Um, I uh, wasn't particularly... Is it Longshore? Long From Halo 3? You know the one with this, like on the fish plant or something? I don't care if that one comes back because I didn't really like that one either. Um... I'm not too bothered if, um, like, the, um, I don't think they should just bring back maps for the sake of nostalgia. They should bring back maps that are functionally good. Yeah. So, for example, again, it's not a popular one, but Standoff was functionally a good map. But I don't think it'll come back. It's like, yeah, and it's like, the thing is, you want to also think... Aside from bringing them back for multiplayer reasons, think about custom games as well. Because... Yeah, the thing is, with custom games, you are going to be able to, because they're infinite, will be cross-platform. Yeah. So, with regards to the cross-platform business, it's going to be like... Um, it's going to be quite good. Because that means that you'll get PC players building maps, um, and I'm looking forward to seeing Forge. I want to see what I want to see how Forge is going to. What I'm hoping for, because we know that the Ring has some kind of day and night cycle, you know, in the campaign. Yeah. What if they release like a Forge World style Halo map where you can pick the time of day? Do you know, because because the ring has a day-night cycle, what if the map, the forge map, has a day-night cycle you can choose? That would be awesome. 
Well, I'm thinking maybe maybe not. Maybe you can just like auto unless you want it to change. But if you wanted to say have the map set at night, you could just set it to night time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or you could just. I mean, not un unless yeah. I mean, unless you set the way they could do it to make it easy is you can either set a specific time of day and have it fixed, like so the map remains at night time. Or it remains at daytime, or you know whatever. Or if you want it to change, you could set it to change from say twilight to daybreak. Um, so just like from sunrise to the sun's up a little bit. Um, and you could and and, it, and then it's like you can set so like even if you wanted the map to go full day to night, right? Uh, you could do that and then set a timer so it change so. How long does it take to get from that point to that point? So it'd be like, you, you would enter like, say, so if you want to set custom, you could say day to night and set it to, and set that to take 20 minutes or something. No, but from a design perspective, that would be possible because all it would be doing is um, a pre- a pre-programmed transition of day to night, which is fairly simple to have as a pre-baked transition. Like, all you have to do is move the light source across the sky and change the colours. Um, it, it, I think that'll be a... I think... I don't... Maybe, I, maybe they won't have it so it can change in the map. Maybe what I'm thinking is you can have a preset so you can choose to have it like, it, like, yeah, what I think they'll do is have it so you can set a time of day um, when you go into the map. So, you know, one of the things you can change, maybe even the weather. And, you know, so like, say you want it to be raining on the map that you've, you're building, you know. I think you could, you could probably do that. All you have to do is change it in the settings, like map settings, and it'd be like time of day, and you could change it to day, like sunrise, mid morning, mid you know noon, afternoon, evening, sunset, night. That's true, but Halo Infinite's going to launch cross-platform. Yeah. Which means that when it comes out, it's going to be already cross-platform. Which is good. Yeah, I mean, I might, I might change my schedule around Infinite. To be fair, when that comes out, I might tweak things. Um, obviously, it depends what I'm doing for work in that time, whether I'm in the job I'm currently in or whether I've changed jobs. And there's a lot of stuff I need. To, you know what I mean? Because I mean, I, if I'm honest, like I've got no idea whether I'm. You know, it's like it's hard to say where I'm going to be in four months' time. I might have changed a lot by then um however i think it'd be really cool um and i definitely want to play a lot more with my friends on infinite especially because it's because of it being cross-platform um i think that um it'll give us a reason to maybe do earlier streams um Ah, uh, fair. I mean, it's on. It's coming. Uh, it's it's going to be on the Xbox One, One X, and PC. But um, so it's going to be on, yeah, the Series X, what, whatever. The the, the new one. <laughs> um, that's fair enough. I mean, for me, I'm going to play it on PC just because I've already got a gaming PC that works. Like, I don't need to buy a console. Um, it doesn't mean I won't buy one, but just in the beginning, it's like, you only have to buy one copy, and you can play it across all platforms anyway. 
and they've said that already so you buy infinite once you've got it on every platform so say you for whatever reason couldn't get your series x at launch and you had to buy it on xbox one or pc when you do get your series x you can just download it because you already own it on microsoft's game pass thing like you know when you buy it on I might buy one, but to be honest, my PC can handle infinite, I'm sure. Um, oh, no, mine can't. Trying to play Halo Infinite on my PC, it would blow up just as much as it would be. I mean, this thing's never had a problem playing a single game, but then it's because it is, um, um, th this model is, it only came out last year. Um, this this gaming, the, the HP Omen gaming laptop series only came out last year. Uh, and it's modular, which means if I need to change the graphics card, I can just buy a new one. Yeah. It's not difficult. I mean, I'm going to upgrade the RAM anyway. I mean, the RAM's not bad, but I want to upgrade it. Um, just because I can. Um, and I might... I mean, the graphics unit's fine. It's one of the GTX ones, which is, like, one of the best graphics cards at the moment. I mean, when in... By the time... It, it, it'll be able, it's fine it can handle mcc at full rendering like max settings it can handle the new modern warfare game at max settings yeah. it'll be able to handle infinite <laughs> it, it what it what it just means is that um obviously oh, shit. there we go helps fun in the right window oh we're on Oh, we're on snipers. The map I'm playing on right now is Construct. Yeah. Uh, this is the one I'd like to see back myself. I do like this map. Damn it. It's just hard to play snipers on this map. Because it's like, I mean, you've got long sight lines, but they're like vertical sight lines, so you can see people up there. Oh no, we've got someone whose service tag is Uwu. <laughs> Uwu is not allowed in this chat. <laughs> no Uwu. <laughs> I'm afraid you've entered the Uwu free zone, my friend. <laughs> it's like, um... It's just a running gag between me and Jacob about Uwu. Um, it's it's like every time that I buy he buys me a drink, I just go ooh. ooh. <laughs> um, I hate it though. <laughs> I, I, I can't explain why I hate it. I just do. <laughs> just makes me cringe. <laughs> That's like the worst version of ooh. ooh. Oh. oh, oh. <laughs> Hello, what's this? <laughs> Have you not seen that where someone edited the Halo logo? It said it's hey whoa. And it was it was he hello campaign multiplayer uwu. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can safely say I can sleep. I can sleep well at night knowing I never have heard that song. That doesn't surprise me one bit. I just. Is it by? It, I'm say unless it's by Baby Metal, I'm not interested. <laughs> and even then, I'd be ju I'd be judging Baby Metal heavily for ooh wooing. It's like just um, it's like I don't know. I, I'm, Oh Jesus Christ! Um, how did I just literally? I made a guy snipe himself. As in, I, I ran at him. He shot the wall. I meleeed him, and the bullet ricocheted off the wall and killed him. That was hilarious. Do you remember when recon was given out by Bungie in Halo Three, and a guy got it for being killed by a traffic cone? 
The first guy to get recon armor that wasn't a member of Bungie um, was a dude who managed to get himself killed by a traffic cone by accident. Which I thought was hilarious. Yeah. Like, I thought that was pretty good. Like, they, the fact they used to reward recon armor as well. I mean, I'm glad they made it available to everybody in the end. Um, because, of course, it was an armor that everybody wanted. But they made it not eat. It was like it was it was an it was an armor that people wanted. Like there was, there was enough demand for it. Um, you see, that's true. But then I thought the vidmasters were quite challenging. You know, when they did them. Um, Oh yeah, it's like me and my friends. When Halo Three ODST came out, we got we nailed the vidmasters within like a day, all of them. And people thought because of how soon it was after the launch of Halo um, Halo Three ODST, people thought we were we were all Bungie members or something. And it was great. Um, I was like, I was like, you you do know that you can unlock this armor, right? It's not. It's kind of difficult, but if you if your friends don't suck, <laughs> you'll be fine. Oh, I did too. Ah, uh, you see, I. That's one thing I'd like to see in the multiplayer for Halo Infinite, clan support. Oh yeah. You see, I I'd like to see clan support going forward. Um, I think it's important um, for a com as a community aspect within the game. It brings the community together, um, and I think that um, there's also a, an argument to be had for. Um, like I want one thing I want to see because I got the Arthur. They said in the, in, they are gonna s s reveal some multiplayer soon, you know. Um, I I really want to see the multiplayer stuff. Yeah. I mean, I'm sure it'll be fine. Like I'm sure it's gonna be like it's gonna be great because you know they've taken their time with this game to really work out what people wanted. Um, people will still complain, but they've worked out what the majority. Of sensible people wanted in the game, and um, for me that means that um, they they paid enough attention. Like there are people who were like, "Oh, yeah, we don't want this, we don't want that," but um, it's like I also think that they've they've gone right. Well, how many people are just being detractors? Like, the certain things I think the fans requested where they went, "Well, we're not doing that." Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, we want no advanced movement. It's like, yeah, fuck that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, they're like, so, again, they probably have the same argument as me. Why can't a super soldier climb up a ledge? Why can't a super soldier run fast? It's like, realistically, Spartans should be able to sprint. They're supposed to be athletic. It's like, it's not like, it's like, oh, this arm is too heavy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, there's no reason that, that, that a Spartan shouldn't be able to sprint, other than, oh, it's not classic Halo. Yeah, but you know what else isn't classic Halo? Having player customization. If we're going far back enough. Yeah. What else isn't classic Halo? The, you know, <laughs> dual wielding wasn't classic Halo. Um, so it's like, no, no one complains about dual wielding in Halo 3 or 2. And I think that it's like, well, how classic we want to go, because if we want to go, well, realistically, first person isn't the classic Halo, because originally it was developed as an RTS for the Mac. So actually, there's no, it, unless you're playing a real-time strategy game on a Mac computer, you're not playing classic Halo. Because that's how it was originally going to be released. It's like, I think, as long as they've taken... 
the good things from all the games. Like the inclusion of Sprint I saw as a good thing. Um, the advanced movement in Halo 5 I thought was a brilliant addition. I thought it made the gameplay just flow. Um, and they and they bring back the sandbox element from like Halo, the, the first Halo ones. You know where there's like anything could happen. Which is what they're going for. They've said they've, they've really doubled down on the whole. This is a sandbox, which is why they're given the open, the sort of semi-open world. Yeah. It's like you know you can complete your objectives in whatever order that you want, which is fine. That's good. Give give the player the freedom. So if they go, okay, I want to take down these AA turrets, but I want to, I know, like say they're on the second playthrough of the campaign. They go, I want to clear the AA turrets, but I know for a fact I can get a power weapon from the first one, from the one furthest away from me. So I want to go do that one first. And it's like a good example of that is in Halo 3 when you looked at the the gate the uh, the mission the Covenant, where you could sort of go deact you had to deact deactivate. <coughs> Sorry, both towers, but you didn't have to go to one or the other. You could go to either. As long as that final tower was the was the one where it needed to go, but you know that you weren't strictly forced into any order. You weren't put on one thing. One thing I can't stand about any game is when you're put on rails. It's like no, you've got to do it in this order. It's like unless it's something like you've got to go and kill a boss. It's like you shouldn't be able to, like in Halo, it's like you can't kill a boss. Oh, but first, why don't you do all the other missions in the game and then just. But it's like what I think they're doing is that every every mission's going to have an, an, an explorable zone, and it's going to have like your objectives are this and here's and you can do it in whatever way you want, or you can go exploring and then do it, you know. And I think that's the best approach because again, it's about player freedom, and that player freedom is going to go a long way. Because I think that that player freedom is something that Halo needed to modernise the gameplay. Like, to, to, to give the gameplay something new. You know, to give it something new to grab onto. Because it needed... It's like, Halo is fine, but I think it just needed something to set it apart from. But what's so good about this Halo that the other Halos don't do? It's like, well, you, what are the other Halo games where it's open world? There aren't any. You know what I mean? What are the other Halo games where you can truly choose to play this game any way you want? Like, you know, there's no other Halo game that allows that. And for me, that's... Like, that's massive. Like, personally, I think that, the, that, that, that Halo Infinite is ambitious, and I think it is going to be really good. I really do. I think I, th I think what they've achieved so far, and what the vision, the creative vision for this game, I think is going to be brilliant. And I think it's important to. Um, I think it's important to realise that, um, you know, the game's not even out yet. Yeah. It's just so... It's just one of those things, isn't it? Like, people are going to complain no matter what they do. The thing is with Halo is it's more about... They're, they're, people are going to moan it either way, but it's like, you've got to just find your thing and do it.
Sorry, I was just reading something there. Okay, so we've got Big Team Slayer on something, some variant of Sandbox. Oh god, the Uwu song. Good. <laughs> Oh, this is a cool variant of this map. <laughs> Free Mac. Ah. Oh, whoa, okay. Uh... This is an interesting map. I don't recall this one being in Halo 3. This might be a Forge variant that they've added later. I mean, that's fine. I was just like, holy shit, what's this? <laughs> I just got lasered. Uh... Sorry? There's probably a, variant, a, a map variant I played. Probably, I just I just can't remember. Um... I've played, I have played most of them back in the day. I mean, I might have played this one, but it was a long time ago. I just don't remember this one. Oh, we've got... Ooh. I know what you mean, but come infinite, I'm definitely well, we're definitely playing some Halo. Yeah. Um, we've got we've got on my team we've got service tags of Uwu and Owo now. We've got both. It's like they know and they're coming for me. Stop this! Stop it right now! See this shit? This this needs to stop. <laughs> It's time to stop. It's time to stop, okay? No more. Who are your parents? Where are your parents? I'm calling Child Protective Services because it's time to stop. It's time to stop. What's that? My favorite video, one of my favorite like reactions to anything, it's time to stop. My favorite reaction to the John Tron's great. I'll take your entire stock. I have several questions. <laughs> um, another one I like. Uh, another one I like. I don't. I don't like where this is going. Yeah, I was gonna say another one that I like of his. Uh, a couple of reactions is that one. I have several questions. I don't like where this is going. The one where it's just him staring and it zooms in on his face. Um, but I, I like that one. That am I dead yet? <laughs> the am I the, am I dead yet one gets me every time. That's a lot of damage. <laughs> He's listen, don't don't listen don't listen to Phil. He's completely gone insane. He sniffed a whole can of flex glue and now he's running around the office. It's like you you saw that bone in half, but, but why? Why would you do that? What? Oh, Phil, you make me angry, Phil. 
I see. I've got a friend who, when um, who my friend is called Phil, right? Yeah. And so when I go to Corp to meet him, and he goes, "Hi, Aaron," and every time I just go, "Oh, Phil, you make me angry, Phil," and then kick something. <laughs> um, it's like when it, when he turns that colander into a bowl, it's just like, "Phil, you make me angry, Phil." He kicks over that trash can. You could just use one of these, Phil. <laughs> It's like, um, you saw the boat in half, but why? Why would you do that? Um, and then it's like, um, oh, uh, my, one of my favourite ones is like when he covers himself in flex tape at the end, uh, and he's in the shower going, I'm not, I'm, I'm too perfect. This is what happens when you try and play God. <laughs> um, and it's like, um, I love, I love his reaction to that. I also love it when he did the one about Dan Aykroyd's skull vodka. It's like, it's like I feel like I feel like he's just lost his mind. Is like vodka, but this in in a skull, and it's going to be dis distilled with diamonds. It's like um, he, he does. I, I love John Tron though. He does make me laugh, uh, especially the flex tape stuff. Um, for a while, me and my friends, when we used to go out um, to corp and stuff, we would literally basically spend the whole night talking in in John Tron flex tape quotes. Um, to the point where my friend was so drunk that, he, that it, on the way out to the smoking area, he went for a, we went we went outside for a cigarette, and he fell backwards down the stairs to the smoking area. And I didn't ask him if he was okay. I went, "Now that's a lot of damage." He just looked at me and went, "Yeah, I'm fine, thanks, Aaron." And then it's um, uh, and then one time my friend said he wasn't coming out, so I sent him a gif of that bit where John Tron goes, "I'm going to do you a lot of damage." Like weirdo Squidward opens, and, "I'm going to do you lots of damage." <laughs> Absolutely love it. Like that is one of my favourite things. Just John Tron talking about flex tape. <laughs> You, you saw this boat in half, and you repaired it using only flex tape. But why? Why would you do that? <laughs> and it's um, I think I just it's like um, <laughs> that bit where he's like um, where he's all the all the uses for flex tape, and he's like, if your cat's breathing too loud, just put it over its like, mouth and nose. And <laughs> Come here, he's gonna stop breathing. <laughs> it's just. It's, yeah, it's brilliant. And honestly, one of my friends, I don't see much of him anymore. He's kind of taken himself off the radar a little bit. But um, my friend Tom and I, well, I say friend, I've not spoken to him in a long time. I don't even know anymore, really, with him. Um, but we used to quote it all the damn time. It was brilliant. It's like... It, it was so funny. I, that, I just think I'd like to see John Tron react to JoJo's bizarre adventure. Yeah, oh yeah, he has. But I want, I want JoJo's bizarre adventure. <laughs> I want him to react to JoJo. <laughs> uh, it's like, um, let's see what other ones has he done that are really good. Um, when he reacted to the room as well. Um, And there's, there's some brilliant, brilliant John Tron videos. I do. I think, I think he's hilarious. I mean, I think he's underrated for sure. Uh, it's, oh my, oh, another one he did, and really another really funny John Tron video was when he reacted to the Soldier Boy gaming console. And he actually bought one as well. 
like he bought one to react to it, and I thought that was hilarious. Oh, uh, and the, oh, that one with when he's reacting to the um, bootleg Disney games. When um. When he's playing the Lion King one, and when you, the game over animation is Simba hanging himself. And it's just, oh my god! To the circle of life. I'd like, I'd like to know where he finds all these weird things to react to. Also, I find it weird because he'll. He seems to post quite a few videos in a close succession, then he'll go away for a while and then he'll come back again. Now, I don't know what the guy does. Does he do something else for a living? Or is this is that just his full-time job making videos? It is what? Oh, his show. Ah, right. I mean, it looks expensive to run, to be fair. Because he's always got, like, visual gags and stuff in there. Do you know, one time, um, I was tempted to buy every all of, all of my, like, going out friends. Um... Uh, a Christmas present of a can of flex tape, flex seal, sorry. Like, buy, just buy them all flex tape or flex seal. It's like, well, it's like you'll never, you'll never, they might never need it, but they'll also. <laughs> they're like, why did you buy this? I'm like, well, why not? I mean, they can't tell me that it's a useless present. You'll definitely have something to flex tape in your house. <laughs> yeah. What's that? What's that? What's that other thing in the other one? Um, oh yeah, th that one. It's like um, where I like the, the flex seal one, where he just goes a step too far, where he buys that chicken wire and then cuts it up and then makes a boat out of the chicken wire and coats it with flex seal and turns it into a boat. <laughs> And, and then John John Tron's just like, he's actually gone insane. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's like, I like how there was that, and then it's like, he actually got Phil Swift to be in the video as well. I think he did, yeah, and it's like, where am I? This is the Flex universe. This is Flex World or something. This is the flex world, and it's like he's in the afterlife. And like he's the king of this weird, like, afterlife realm where he's. where everything is flex tape. But one of my favourite things is that, um, do you know Flex Seal? Um, that Phil Swift had to release a video on his Instagram telling people that they couldn't eat Flex Seal. People are asking if they could eat flex seal, and he's like, it can do everything, but don't eat it. So you can do pretty much anything with the can of flex seal, but just don't eat it. It's like, um, I mean, I wasn't planning to, Phil, but thank you. So, well, there goes my Saturday night plans. I was just going to literally drink a can of flex seal. <laughs> gets the post-mortem. So what happened? We don't know. His insides are entirely coated in rubber f rubber seal for some reason. The good news is we can literally saw him in half and use him as a boat now. I don't know, but apparently, apparently his last words were just, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> Too bloody and tight, Pods. 
Yeah, that's great. I mean, I say I say what we do with Tide Pods is we stop telling, we stop warning people not to eat them and just let nature take its course. It's called natural selection. Yeah, that what they did. Well, there was the, the guy who did the ice bucket challenge. What he did was he used the tractor's uh, trough to do it. Yeah, that one, and it was dropped too hard on his head, and it broke his neck. I mean, you've got to be a special kind of stupid to do that, but you know. I think so, but like, what did you ex? Yeah, th 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 there was going to be an accident eventually because we're not allowed nice things. <laughs> the only thing I would definitely do is I definitely eat Flex Seal. I feel like if you eat Flex Seal, you become powerful, and they just don't want you to know. <laughs> the government don't want you to know this, but how do you become immortal? You have to drink enough Flex Seal. China. <laughs> what, what, injecting disinfectant? Yeah. That's not really racist anymore. Yeah, yeah, don't thing. worry. What I've got downstairs is I've got a bunch of needles and I'm going to inject some Dettol into my fucking veins. <laughs> yeah, you've got to become more powerful than you could ever imagine. <laughs> By injecting Dettol. I don't know why, but there's somebody whose gamer his gamer tag is Sad Butter, and I like it so much. Sad Butter. I mean, how do you determine if butter's sad? These are the questions that keep me up at night. Here's one that keeps everyone awake, the horse's dream. Uh, I can so. <laughs> it's literally me and Chloe like get to bed and she'll be like, Are you gonna get to sleep? I'm like, yeah. And then I'll roll over to her like and it like I'm like, babe, and she'll be like, Honey, it's three AM, what do you want? The horse's dream. <laughs> so is that a question you could ask me, Bill? I don't I don't know. I'm afraid of the answer because it'll it'll um it, All, most animals dream. Like I know dogs dream. Um, it's like um, I just. <laughs> um, I'll tell you what's a good game, and we ought to play it on stream sometime with a big group or like a group of like maybe three or four people. Uh, there's that, but I'm thinking um, there's like you can get it online. Uh, it's like an online emulator for Cards Against Humanity. Have you heard of Cards Against Humanity? I love it. I um, it's like this this pub I regularly go to in town called Brew Dog. Um, it's where they do my favourite beer, uh, and you can pick up if you're drinking there. You can take a, a copy of Cards Against Humanity to your table. Yeah, it's extra life, and there is. Yeah, I was gonna say that there's also another one nearby called Meltdown as well. That one's more like a bar, though. But I think um, they have like you know gaming PCs and consoles set up at night and stuff. Yeah, that's what Meltdown do as well. You see, I go to Meltdown, but that's because I, when I, it's usually when I'm on a night out, I'll go, and, and what we'll do is we'll start the night there, we'll just dick around on my Untitled Goose game and get a little bit drunk before we go somewhere else. At Meltdown, yeah, they do. Uh, Extra Life, yeah. Yeah, I actually one That's cool. I mean, I've not been to Extra Life, but I know I've got a friend... Tekken? No, I don't know, I can't remember what game it was, but I entered one, I got one of the one of the Nice. I got one of the uh the survive wasn't nice. 
What was the prize? If you go, if you get runner up in the tournament, you get um, uh, you get a Shivering Knight V Bucks coin. <laughs> That's good. That's funny. Oh yeah. That's cool. No, I like that. That's really good. Um, I also, because I know my friend Damien goes there. Fisher. Oh no, it's called Damien. Damien Fisher. He's called. Really? Yeah, Oh yeah, I don't want to play against him. I have he's an he's an fighting game champion. Yeah, he's probably probably it's like he probably just enters it's like, okay, well we might as well all just give up now. Oh you may as well against Oh definitely, yeah. Um I mean I I need to check out Extra Life more often because I go to Meltdown quite regular on a so it's usually a Friday or a Saturday night. I get down there. I go down to extra life with my pal Steve and everyone else. It's all right. I like extra life. I mean, if I remember rightly, they um, it's like, because I know they serve like coffee, tea. I think they do al alcoholic. I, 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 am I right in thinking they do alcohol at night, or is that a different place? That's a different place. This is a cafe. I was gonna say because. It's because there used to be a place next door called the Drinks Inn, which was like a bar that was kind of not attached to it. Oh God! You see, because my friend used to work at the Drinks Inn, um, and my other friends used to go to Extra Life. So what I'd do is I'd go see my friends in Extra Life, then go for a pint next door. Um, but then Meltdown is basically Extra Life, but with alcohol <laughs> and. Uh, some people don't. Some people don't need that. I thought like, I'd rather go. Like, during the day, I'd rather go to a cafe. But if I'm out in the evening, I'd like to be able to have a, um, a, a beer. <laughs> I'm a simple man of simple needs, and one of those is usually vodka. But you know, um, it's like oh, go away, Blizzard. Watch. Why have I got a news article coming through? Um, but it's like um, it's honestly. I need to check out Extra Life. It's been too long. I've been in there maybe once. I've been in there a few times, played a few things. It's good, from what I hear. I mean, my friend Damien, he's down there all the time. Um, and then it's like, um, you know, so it's like, I say I know somebody who's down there a lot, so it's not like I wouldn't know anybody. Um, and obviously, if you're down there, I know, I know you. Uh, on top of that, it's, um, it's like... Again, it's like I like Meltdown because it's kind of like the way they've done it. It's very cyberpunky inside. Like they've got like it looks like exposed circuit boards and stuff like in the on the walls and in the toilets. They've got like um, it's like looks like portal gun. It's like you know portal. Yeah. They've got portal mirrors. So they've got two mirrors facing each other. One's like a, an orange one and one's like a blue one. Yeah. And so it looks like looks like you're playing portal when you walk through them. It's cool. Um, and what I like about there as well is if you're a streamer, um, they've got Twitch and OBS and stuff on the computers in Meltdown. So you can stream live from Meltdown if you wanted. And what I also quite like is they've got um, their cocktail menu is all based off games. So they've got um, a cocktail that's like a shot called the Leroy Jenkins. What's well, called? Yeah. Well, it's called Leroy, but it's obviously Leroy Jenkins, and it's because it's one, the strongest one on the menu. <laughs> and they've got like, uh, and they've got like World of Warcraft themed drinks as well. So you've got the um, you've got the Horde Grog and the Alliance. Some I don't know. I don't play Alliance very often, so I can't remember what the Alliance one's called. And they have like a tally, you know, like of of who's. Like what you, who, where, which ones bought, if what, well, who's bought more drinks, like in favor of the alliance or the horde and stuff. So, so it becomes almost like a game of if you're a horde player, you buy a horde drink or just go home. <laughs> I'd, I, 
I want to say they've got a Halo themed one, but if and if if not, I'm gonna tell them to make one called the Master Chief that has like um, it could have like uh, green schnapps in there, um, sours. Uh, I'm trying to think what they could do to make Master Chief green. So you could have like the green apple sours. You could have um, green absinthe. It could come with like a gold a shot of something gold like whiskey. So it looks like the Master Chief's armor. I'd just be like, yeah, I'm having that. <laughs> or just call it, I need a weapon. And then they should have one where the drink is very strong and you're only allowed to buy one called finishing this fight. Or the Great Journey. <laughs> no, why is it called the Great Journey? Because you drink that and you're going to go on a great journey. By which I mean, you're going home. No way. I've seen people. I've seen people really being got killed like, down there. It's a, a, a small variety of a small variety as well. They've got Beyblades. No, that's a small variety of different ones as well. Holy shit! You've even got a, sta a small stadium you can actually stay in. That's ridiculous. <laughs> that's ridiculous. I I need to make my excuses to get down there at some point. <laughs> Do they have, um, do they have the, um... I don't know which one, I don't know which specific days they have. In terms of, do they have, a, like, card game players in to play card games and stuff? Like, Yu-Gi-Oh! and stuff? I haven't seen Yu-Gi-Oh! I've seen probably a few Manic, yeah, that's about it. I was wondering if, I mean, if people came down to play Yu-Gi-Oh! would they stop them? Hmm. Probably not. If you were, if you were drinking... If you were a paying customer, though, like, if you got a group of friends together and held your own little mini tournament, like, if you didn't want to play, if if you didn't want to play meta, you know? Yeah. Yeah, they could do. Or, like, if you just went down there with your friends and brought, like, a couple of decks and just played together, I'm sure they'd have no problem. I mean, I'd play against... I mean, I wouldn't mind playing again against you. Yeah. I mean, we could always... Yeah, it's like, well, what we could do at some point is... At some point, when all this madness is over, uh, more, it would be more, more easy, but things are getting not back to normal now, kind of. Um... And it's like, um, we could we could always go down there at some point and just take some decks down, like have a coffee and play some card games, you know what I mean? They won't stop us. I mean, I could also keep the po can't keep the Pokemon. <laughs> That's another option. Um, alternatively, as well. I do, but I yeah? do only have one Pokemon deck. Fair enough. I mean, if it's, if it's something I'm interested in, I might end up investing, but... One thing as well that's interesting is I know, for example, that Meltdown let people host uh, Dungeons and Dragons there, as long as people are like buying drinks and stuff, you know. Yeah. Which is fair. It's like obviously you don't want want people just to come in and use the space for free. Well, yeah, I'm pretty sure that if like me and you were down there buying a coffee and stuff, if we if we just had our Yu-Gi-Oh decks, I'm sure they wouldn't be like, guys, you can't play that here, like. Why? Do you know what I mean? It'd be a really silly thing to stop you from doing. It's like, it's a gaming lounge. Is it? It's gaming. I I'm pretty sure they'd have zero problem. I mean, I'd double check with them, but I'm pretty sure they'll have no problem. Um, we, we should we should definitely do that. Oh, yeah. What was that for? Was that... Uh, what game was that? Well, I know Extra Life has reopened. It has re... I know. You have Gandhi's tournament. 
Oh yeah. That. Ah uh, yeah. Um. But with regards to that, um, as I say, they have reopened now. So I mean, at least they're open again. So that when when the time comes, we know that they're open. Um. <laughs> I mean, I haven't played it, but I'm tempted. I've seen people play it. I've on Xbox. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll have to have a look into it. It's a shame, because I'll have to have a look into it, because it, it might be something that I like. But it's like, um, yeah, I mean, the thing is, like, one thing I do want to do now that Corona restrictions are easing because things are getting a little better. Is I'm, I want to make I want to make a point of visiting places. So, so one place I might visit is Extra Life. Um, I might I might just go in for a coffee one day if I'm if I'm shopping or something. If I have to go to town for shopping, because um, sometimes I do. Because it's like if I need if I want to buy new piercing jewelry, there's only one place I'll buy it from, and it's in town. Yeah. Called Thou Art on Chapel Walk. Um, so I only buy, I will only buy it from there simply because um, it's the one place where I know the jewellery is good quality because I don't like buying jewellery online. So like piercing jewellery because I don't know what it's made out of. Like if I, because I wear gold stuff because I've got obviously I've got a lot of piercings. Uh, so I've got my nose, my ear, stretched ears. I've got a, a bar across the top of my nose here, and a bridge piercing here. Yeah, it's like. Um, and um, what, I, what I do is um, I go to Thou Art to buy those because I know, for example, that my skin doesn't like brass. So I have to make sure that when they're making the gold jewellery, it's gold plated and not just brass. Because if it's brass, my skin reacts and, it, and it's like, it isn't, I'm not allergic to it, but it, my skin just doesn't like it. Um, yeah, it, well, it turns it green. It's true. Skin, uh, it contains skin green brass. Okay. Or, uh, or copper as well. It's the copper in the brass. It's Because it depends on how what percentage of, co of the brass is copper as well. Um, uh, because if there's too much copper in it, it will start, it can rub off on your skin and when copper oxidizes it turns green. Uh, so you end up with green residue on your ears which is, or, or your nose or whatever that's very hard to clean off. Uh, which is why I buy gold plated, so it's you know plated with real gold instead. It's like yeah, it costs a little bit more, but it's not suit gold plated's not particularly expensive. It's more like if you buy genuinely gold jewelry, that's when you pay a lot of money. Um, and it's like that's that's why I trust Thou Art because all of their jewelry is like medical grade quality. So so it, so this. So even the ones that are plated, they're electro-plated with like gold, like the ones I have. Um, and on top of that, the, uh, what, the what they've electro-plated is medical-grade steel. It's like surgical steel they've done, which means that it's designed to go under skin. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and it's like, well, when the, soon. I mean, I'm getting a tattoo on Saturday. Um, not there. Uh, I don't go for my tattoos there. I go to another studio for my tattoos. Um, I go there for my piercings though, it's like, I want another piercing, I want a lip piercing. Um, I've always wanted a lip piercing, I've decided I'm gonna, after lockdown I'm gonna do it because I've wasted six months of my life in lockdown. So, I'm just gonna do it when I, when I, when I can. Um, and see, that's fair enough, it's like, one thing that freaks people out at work is because I've got these big stretched ears that um, it's like it's, it's like God, you can put stuff through that. I'm like, yeah, it's it's great because um, if you've got because they're um, well, they are massive. I can literally fit like two fingers through the holes in my ears, but like with the, with these in, it freaks people out because if I take them out, they go, oh my God, your ears are all stretchy. I'm like, yep. <laughs> yeah, no worries.
That's all three shots to kill him. But I sniped him three times. Did anyone see that? I think he was lagging. Ah, yeah, cool, cool. Um, Oh god, is it, is, it that, is it that slow tonight? Oh no, it's been that slow since we checked off since we came in. Oh, right. It's gonna be, um... I'll tell you what though, it's like, um... One thing I'd, I look forward to getting, when I get new tattoos, I always look forward to it. But, yeah. um... This one on my throat was quite painful, as you can imagine. Uh, and the other one's going just here to the side of it. <laughs> so it's going to hurt. <laughs> well, every tattoo hurts, but I'm already thinking, ouch, <laughs> basically. It's like it hurts to think about it, but that's fine. It's like, it's like the pain's worth it for the art. It's like I'm one of those people, because I'm an artsy person and I do a lot of graphic design and stuff, um, the way I think is like, you know, yeah, okay, so it's going to hurt for like the hour it takes to do it, but um, it's on your body forever, you know what I mean? Yeah, that's how I always, that's why it's always tattooed, I always, I only, I only think of the person, you know, once you've got too many sticks on, like, the cigarette sticks, you get them right The sticking on tattoos, yeah, fair enough, yeah. Yeah, yeah I always, I, I, I always get it, but um, it's like... <laughs> you see, that's what I used to do as a kid. That's what I used to do as a kid, and then you end up if you, you end up like me here. I've got it all over my hands, all up my arms, on my neck, on my head. It's like, but the thing is, um, I used to draw on my arms when, when I was a kid and stuff. Uh, so, I, but I used to do it all the time. My parents were like, "Yeah, he's gonna have tattoos when he's older. <laughs> like, he's definitely gonna have tattoos when he's older." Doesn't happen. There's a reason that those it, the reason those inks are allowed in schools is because they're child safe, so they're non-toxic. It's like yeah, name somebody who's got sepsis from ink. <laughs> it's like unless you pour ink into an open wound, I don't think it's possible. It's like people said to me, um, aren't you going to regret those tattoos when you're older? I'm like, no. <laughs> it's like, what I would regret is if I was like, when I was older, I'm like, oh, I wish I'd had tattoos when I was younger. That's what I would regret. Because I'm... it's like, I suppose it is, it's different because my, well, no one no one in my family other than me and my brother have got lots of tattoos. Um, but my, my, my parents were like, because my brother got a couple of tattoos done um, on his face. And they're like, are you going to regret having tattoos on your face? He's like, well, no, I like them. Which is fair enough. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's not like he's got any tattoos on his face that are bad. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's nothing offensive. He's got, like, um, a little dagger, like, with a heart, going through a heart, which is like, um, like, like a retro-style tattoo. He's got, like, a, a little crescent moon, uh, and he's got a flower on the side of his face... Uh, and he's got the word family on his chin, like uh, on the side, and it is really, it looks really good. When I, and I, the way I see it is, people say, "Oh, don't have your face tattooed." I'm like, if if the tattoo on your face is is tasteful and it's not done badly, it can look really nice. Like it's like I say that to anybody. It's like don't. It's like my my, my, my me and my brother go to the same tattoo artist. Um, and that's because we both know him, like, outside of tattooing. My brother used to play in a band with him. Um, and I've, and I've just known him through people for years and years and years. Um, and stuff like that. And then also there's, um, it's like, like I say, like, I got the sides of my head tattooed and it's like, well, I want more up there, but, like, it's, 
what I find frustrating is that um, people have a need to... Or pe- just because you've got tattoos, people think that they're allowed to judge judge you for that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I'm not... It, it doesn't change who I am. I just like having... I just like tattoos. And it's like, I, I plan to have a lot more before I'm 30. And I've got like three and a half years to do that. I'm going to have plenty. I've got a lot planned. Yeah. It's just, ha- tattoos are also expensive. So you can't afford to do it all the time. Yeah. It's like, I've, I've, I've put money aside in my savings, but luckily, because... Well, I say luckily, but you know, because we've been in a pandemic, and we've not been, and and tattoo studios had to close, it meant that I paid a fifty-pound deposit for my tattoo, um, which you know it's standard to pay a deposit just so you're not wasting the tattooist's time, Um, and it's not like basically whatever you've paid in deposit comes off the price that you're charged on the day, so I paid fifty pounds. The the whole tattoo is probably going to cost me another fifty or sixty pounds. You know, in total, like probably about 120 pounds, which is, when you think about it, I've had since April to put aside when I paid the 50 pound deposit to put away another 50, 60 pounds. It's not difficult. You just spend a little bit less money, you know what I mean, every month and put it away. And I've also got this thing called Save the Change, where basically every time I spend any money, it rounds up, it rounds up to the nearest pound. So say I spend five pound fifty. It'll round it up six pounds and put fifty pence in my savings. Yeah. It works because it also means that I always spend my bank balance in full numbers, so I've not got like twenty p left in my bank. You know what I mean, or something, which you can't do anything with. And also, any change I do have like that is deposited straight into my savings. It's, it's, it's um, I was quite surprised how much. You know, like, when, you, when you're buying, like, cans of pop and stuff at the work canteen, yeah. I was quite surprised by how much you actually end up saving. Because uh, then, also, the reason I do that with my savings is that um, it just means that saving up for things is a bit easier. Yeah. And, that, and that's what I like, because um, I've been waiting for this for a while now. This tattoo. I've been wait. I, I booked it in at the start of April, and then we uh, got told tattoo studios had to close. So that was um, that was fun. I was I was only a little bit annoyed at that. <laughs> By which I mean I was very annoyed. Oh, betrayal. Okay, well, why did that? I know what I know what happened. You know, you st- I just stuck a grenade to a vehicle, right? Uh, and then, um, and it's like, uh, and then what happened was um, my my teammate jumped on the vehicle to hijack it after I stuck it. I'm like, no, no, no. Yeah. It's like, oh well. It's like, oh well. <laughs> Too bad. It sucks to be you, I guess. <laughs> but I um yeah, it's it's weird. Um I'm I think I've got to the point with uh with COVID lockdown where I just want things to go back to normal now. I'm fed up of, like, um, not being allowed to do certain things. Or having to... Like, the, the weirdest concept for me is that, you know, you used to be able to just, like... For me, I used to be able to just walk into a pub and go get a drink, right? If I wanted one. Yeah. And now I have to book a table. Yeah. So, like, on Saturday night, um, I don't know if Chloe is able to come with me or not because we might not be able to get someone to watch the kids, but I've arranged to meet some friends. Uh, and Chloe was going to come with, but obviously it's like, she's like, oh, it's, it's totally cool if I can't make it, because obviously if, if there's no one can watch the kids, then whatever, you know. Um, but I've arranged to meet some friends who I haven't actually seen since before lockdown happened. Um, and we've had to book a table. 
in my local pub where everyone in the pub knows who I am because I, I'm a local. As I say local, it's, it's in town, but it's the one I go to all the time. Um, it's, it's a rock pub called the Dove and Rainbow. Um, and I go there a lot because it, it's like where uh, a lot of my friends go and I, it's a meeting place. And it's weird because, like... It's just such a different experience, you know, having to having to book a table and be like, oh, okay, okay, so I can only, okay, so if you if anyone else wants to come outside these like six people, then they have to get their own table. Yeah. And I just find that strange. Do you know what I mean? It's not it's not like it used to be where you can just go in and if your friends are in and you can just go sit at their table. Yeah. You, you can't do that. Because of social distancing, and it's just, it's just so, so weird. It is really strange. Oh god, I'm tired. Um, right, I think I'm gonna end the stream there, dude, just because I'm absolutely shattered. Yeah. But um, I'll be back on on a regular streaming. Um, I'll be I'll be back on a regular streaming basis now. Just, I, um, I needed a little break because I wasn't feeling too great in myself. Um, so I couldn't bring myself to stream, if that makes sense. Just because I, I, I was, I was thinking, I had a lot of other stuff to think about at the time. Yeah. Um, things were stressful and I was just like, I need some time to sort myself out. <laughs> and then, well, I'm back now anyway. So, um, yeah, I'll, um... I'm going to close off the stream, but just a second. So thanks everyone for watching. Uh, stay safe and I'll see you guys next time.